Just to give you one uh, little exercise here, suppose I tell you that's a Gen 2 penguin, that's a Gen 2 penguin, that's a Gen 2, <clears throat> that's a Gen 2, where's the Gen 2? I can't see anybody, so, but, oh, I think I see somebody pointing up there. Now notice, I did not show you that picture. <clears throat> you, you extracted some commonalities from the others that let you be right there. And we, in this case, a postdoc who is now teaching Williams College, Nate Cornell and I decided, this has to be one case where blocking, massing, is advantageous. And the argument was that when they're together like this, like you had them, you can see the features that sort of define the category. Maybe, for example, this little white band up here. Whereas interleaving or spacing makes that very difficult to do. You see a Gen 2 here, then a Lachesis, then a Reinhardt, then a Gen 2. And thinking back here to what's common is more difficult. I think I have put an extra slide in here, get rid of that. So we had people learn the styles of 12 different paintings, painters by seeing six examples of each painter's paintings. Half of those, six of the artists, the participants saw their paintings one after another in a row, block practice. The other half, they saw them interleaved with the paintings by the other artists. And I'm going to give you a feeling for this by just showing you an example. This, this would be an example of a mass block. That's a painting by Lewis. Another one by Lewis. Another one by Lewis. Are you getting Lewis's style now? Another one by Lewis. Another one by Lewis. They weren't selected to be good artists. <laughs> Another one by Lewis. So in, a, in an interlay block, on the other hand, you'd see the six individual paintings by a given artist intermixed with paintings for the other artists, and it would be like seeing that there's a Pisani, there's a Wexler, there's a Schlorf, there's a Strachelot, Hawkins, Milrea. So anyway, they go through those 72 paintings, what uh, this would be a sample of what the first 24 would be like. And then, on the final test, they see completely new paintings. And they have to say, pick who painted that new painting. That's the task. They haven't seen those before. They have to extract the style of a given painter and say who painted it. Again, we were expecting this is one case where blocking, massing should help, and this is the results we got. Researchers are often not as smart as we think we are. And this now has been replicated with many, learning many other categories, butterflies, birds, novel objects, women's voices, uh, statistical rules, a whole bunch of things. Now what had made this research have a big impact is something we kind of threw in almost as an afterthought. After they were tested, and on this test had done better with the artists that were interleaved, we asked them this question. Which do you think helped you learn more, masked or spaced? And they could say masked about the same as spaced. Now these are the actual results over here. And that's what they said. <clears throat> now this has been replicated many times. And actually, Dr. Veronica Yan, who's here somewhere in our lab, has been trying to explore what sort of experience do we have to give people? What sort of instruction would lead them to come to realize the benefits of interleaving? One of the early things she tried was she ran this same sort of experiment, but right before she asked them this question, they were told 90% of learners do as good or better with interleaving. What she found was that 80% of people think they're in the other 10%. It's really compelling, and I won't go into all interpretations,
but what it does look like just in general, that interleaving highlights a difference in relationships and that may be worth more with respect to the final test than seeing the commonalities. Thank <laughs> you.